Hello, this is Chris Neal with South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools how-to video series for MIDI 1. The following video is on basic recording techniques for MIDI. We'll be doing a little review, looking at an aux input with multi-MIDI tracks, set up some basic recording and moving the record enable between tracks. So as always, my shortcuts and modifiers will be shown at the bottom of the screen. If you need a conversion, there's one at the end of the video. Some useful shortcuts that we we'll use in this video, the tap tempo is the T key, and moving record enable, we have command up and down arrow keys. So in this video, we're gonna be doing some basic recording of MIDI. So let's review some of the setup things that we did in the last video. We're gonna to go to track, create click track. And then we need to set up the click. Remember, we can go to the setup window. We can go to the click button and double click to get the click count off options. So we're gonna go during record and play and we are gonna have count off only during record and we will set our count off to two bars and hit okay. And next we need to set our tempo. So we can come up into this field here, click, and we can either type in a number or we can tap on the T key if we want to tap out the tempo. So we have our conductor ruler turned on. Remember we need to hit enter to accept the number entered into that tempo field. And then we can come over here and show meter if we need to change the meter. We default to 4-4, but if we need to change to any other meter, we can do that clicking that plus symbol. We want to go to the record button and we want to make sure it is in normal mode, uh, not loop. And we want to make sure there is no loop playback turned on. So no loop record, no loop playback. So option L for loop record. Command Shift L for loop play. We want to have our grid turned on and you can set it to whatever you like. I have it set to an eighth note here and we are in grid mode over there. We're going to go to event operations and turn on input quantize by enabling input quantize and setting it to 16th note. And of course you can set it to some other value if you'd like. So you may have noticed over here, I'm gonna try and stay in just the edit window in this video. So I've added these sections over here. So we can make those changes here or in the view menu. And so I added the instrument, the inserts, and the IO. We won't really need the instrument section in this video, but we will in a future video. So we'll leave it there. So in this video, we're gonna look at one of two main ways that I set up MIDI devices and that is with an aux input and multiple MIDI tracks. So I use this when I'm gonna do something like drums and I maybe wanna split out kick, snare, and hi-hat onto different MIDI tracks, all going to one virtual instrument. So let's create one stereo aux input track, and you can see the keyboard shortcuts I'm using, and three MIDI tracks. And we'll hit create. There they are. So next let's name these tracks. So I'm gonna double click on the aux input track name and I will enter lowercase v, lowercase i, and drums for the name. Down in the comment section, I'm gonna make note of the virtual instrument that I am loading up. I will come back to this when I know what drum kit I have loaded. I'm gonna hit command right arrow to go to the next track and I will name that lowercase mi kick command right arrow lowercase mi snare command right arrow lowercase m and i and then hi-hat now that I've named all the tracks I can load up the virtual instrument multi-channel instrument Boom. Next, I will load up a drum kit. So I'm going to choose Urban One. So I can click here. There are the kits that are available to me. And load up Urban One. So I close that down. So now I have 
my virtual instrument uh, and I had my kit picked out. So I come back to the comment section and enter Urban Kit 1. So now I need to route the MIDI output of all of my MIDI tracks to this virtual instrument boom. So I'm going to select my tracks over here. I'm going to option click to deselect everything. Then I'm going to click on kick and shift click on a hi-hat to select them all. I'm going to hold down option shift, the modifiers for do to all selected. So the MIDI output in the edit window is the same as this MIDI out in the mix window. So let's go back over to the edit window. So this is the IO setup. So I'm going to go to the output and I'm going to choose boom. So now you see they are all being routed to boom. If I put one in record and play my keyboard, Okay, I'll locate the keys that I want to use for kick and snare. So let's see, we'll turn on the click. We gotta have a click. So let's turn that on. Remember seven on the number pad, we'll turn the click on and off. Let's audition. Okay, we're getting the click. That's good. So now we're ready to record. So I've got two bars of count off and I'm gonna go ahead and leave the first bar blank. I like to do that so in case I hit a note a little too early or I decide to add a pickup at the beginning, I've got room to work with. So I will leave generally one or two bars uh, blank at the beginning of my session. So first I'm going to record the kick drum and then I'll come back and record a snare and hi-hat. So I'm going to hit return to get my cursor back at the beginning of the session. And I'm going to hit three on the number pad to initiate record. So there's my kick drum. Messed up one little note. I'll come back and fix that in a minute. Uh, I'm going to trim the end of this back. Uh, so that it ends where the bar ends and there's not extra room there. So let's trim that back. Okay, and uh, now let's go record the snare. So we can move our record enable track, actually while you're recording, and we'll use that later when we're loop recording, but you can move it on the fly by holding command and up and down arrows. So that will move it to the next track down or up. So you can move it while you're actually recording, you can move it to another track. So it's a really helpful shortcut to use when you're working with MIDI and we'll see when we get into some of the loop recordings where it can be kind of handy working and so forth on different tracks. Okay so I've got the snare record enabled and I hit return to move my edit cursor back to the beginning of the session and I hit three to initiate record. Okay, there's my snare track. Let's trim the end back in a little bit and uh, let's listen. Okay, that kick drum's kind of bothering me and we're on input quantized, so this is obviously quantized to the wrong 16th note. I'm in an 8th note grid, so if I swap over here to 16th, you can see that it's quantized to a 16th, just not the right one. So uh, we should go fix that. So I can come over here to clips, I can change it to notes, and I'm going to scroll down so that they are in view, that kick drum is in view. And remember over here we have the MIDI zoom, so I'm going to make those notes a little bigger, which zoomed them off screen above, so let me scroll back. And I'm just going to grab this MIDI note, get the grabber tool, grab this MIDI note, and pull it to the eighth note that it should be quantized to. Go back to clip. And now it's all better. So we can move on to the hi-hat now. So let's move the record down there. Command down arrow. Find my hi-hat here. There we go. So I'm going to hit return and three on the number pad. Lay down some hi hat So let's hear how I did. So 
sounds beautiful to me. So uh, we should trim this clip back again. All right, it's sticking out here. So go to the trimmer tool, trim that back. All right, so there's some basic recording techniques for you. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.